Uh, the this is quite a, a a different night, a special night for us. First off, it's an international night. Uh, so Wayne, you made this oh, an oh, international wow. meeting. Oh, oh. Happy to be here. <laughs> uh, and so this is the first time we've done something like this where the the subject is one animal and putting this together uh i found i enjoyed it and it was very interesting to see how everyone's idea of how um of what they were thinking when they shot uh, or shoot neuter ranks i mean some it's uh the artistic um uh, desire is there and so there's a lot of artsy um uh, patterns and designs of the animal's body others it's biological um and and it i i found it uh, fascinating and i'm sure you will also that it was just a uh, um you know we've done before when there's been topics um, you know, it could be a region that we've have done, like we did the Philippines back uh, recently. But this is one animal whose basic body plan is pretty consistent through all the different species, is long and thin. So it's how what you're thinking when you shoot this animal, and uh, it was pretty fascinating. So, <clears throat> so tonight uh, we, we'll begin with uh, is. Enmen, is she here? I only see six people. Let's see. And it's more than six. There's three pages. One, two, three. Okay, well, I, I do not see her in the meeting yet. Okay. Um, well, I hope she goes. Because I'd like to begin. Because Ellen Garvey uh, will be um, showing a video. And then later showing an image. Uh, stills. But the... I thought it would be nice to begin with seeing how the animal moves before we get these uh, uh, still shots of, of nudibranchs. And since you now, uh, what I would like is is when we get to, for example, eight, um, Andrea, you you when we begin with the stills, they're all everybody's in alphabetical order, and you are the leadoff batter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, in the words of our former illustrious president, I am going to be dictator for a day. <laughs> okay. So. For a day, right? <laughs> just for a day. Unless I get to like it, you know. It doesn't feel like it. And so uh, I will be advancing the images. And, but you, uh, you know, you're free. When we begin, uh, Andrea, you just begin uh, talking. And when the dictator feels you've said enough on that image, <laughs> he's going to advance it to the next one. Okay. So I hope yeah, there's I no one. <laughs> I hope uh, no one has any hurt feelings. But as, if we, you know, you figure ten seconds or so, uh, get it done in ten seconds. What you want to say. Yeah, we could stretch it out a little bit, but if it seems like it's going to be going for a while, then I, I'm going to have to move because we have 18 people. Uh, originally, I thought there was 17, but I miscounted. So uh, we have 18 people. Not everyone has 10 images, but you know, do the math. That's a lot. So um, we will uh, begin. So before we begin the, the actual slideshow, um, what I'd like to ask Ellen if she would begin, uh, and hopefully Enmen will uh, join us. Andy, okay. one question. Are we talking about when we uh, showing the pictures, we seeing how we took the picture? Or no, you can why, just say, Okay, nothing technical. Nothing technical. Okay. If you want to say something technical, technical or why you chose this lens, <laughs> or you using a... Uh, a, a macro adapter to get uh, something special um, or just that you liked it or why you shot it. You don't have to say anything. Just know that in the background, the dictator has his finger on the advance button. 
So, uh, as long as you talk too much, right, Andy? <laughs> yes, correct. Okay, that's uh, right. But yeah, but feel free, you know, just because people want to know, you know, what you were Matt, thinking. Can you enable sharing for me? Pardon me? I'm sorry, Matt needs to enable sharing for me. Just okay. before we Thanks. begin, Andy, you remind me of the, the joke in Russian language when the one guy asked another, why the red square in Moscow is called red square? He said, you see, in 1702, when the uh, Tatars, he said, well, can you make it shorter? He says, that's why it was called Red Square. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Now you understand. <laughs> so, um, hang on one second. Okay. I'm not seeing the button on over there. They moved the button for optimize for video. What can you say? Um, so when I said I would do some um, video that was working from memory that I had some decent video, which in retrospect, uh, maybe not. But anyway, I, I found a few that I'm going to share here. Um, this is kind of an unusual moody and um, you know, as opposed to the ones that have these colors that jump out to say I'm poisonous, this guy takes the uh, opposite approach and uh, goes for the camouflage. I mean, when you look at it there, there's just no way you'd see that if he hadn't been moving. At least I don't think you would. Most people would. Where's that? Um, where's that? From? I will have to look that up. I didn't, I'll, I'll do that and, and get back to you. I didn't pay attention. This guy was um, a little weird. I don't know what he's hanging on there with. Um, usually they're, you know, on something, crawling across it. But uh, as you saw at the beginning, he's, he's somehow got his rear end attached to that uh, barnacle and is just hanging out in free space. I mean, does anybody know what he's attached with? Well, still with his foot, but he's, you know, able to stretch and move along with any movement in the water because he's feeding on uh, on tunicates. Yeah. But I didn't realize they could grab with, with just a little spot. I mean, I thought they were mostly crawling along. Um, this guy, this is a terrible video, but this is the weirdest nudibranch. And Andy, you know what this is, but I've forgotten. The Malibi? The hooded one? Yep, the hooded neuterbrank, yeah. Um, I apologize for the video, but if you haven't ever seen this thing, it's, I mean, you have no, I had no idea it was a neuterbrank. It was about six inches long, I think. This was in uh, Ambon. And as you could tell, I've got, I'm up close and not able to stabilize it, but he's got this hood on his head that he lifts up and moves along and grabs into the sand. It's just the most bizarre looking thing you've ever seen. And I apologize for the video, but keep your eye out for that guy. And here's another one that's just kind of in an unusual position. It's a little unusual, I think, to see them just crawling across the sand like that. Usually uh, you know, they're in with the coral, but very pretty, very pretty nudibranch. Oh, yeah. and, and then this is a classic, I think it's called tailing. Tailing, yeah. Where I guess it's some kind of foreplay. Is that what tailing is? I, I believe it is. Yeah. That way you can also just, you know, keep in touch. So as soon as the first Nudibranch slows down, and the other one can uh, can join. So we really should call it tailgating. I guess you could. I guess you right, could. That's it. I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have that much. All right. Well, great. Um, now, Inman, is she? Are you here? Let me see. No, I don't see her. Okay. Then. Um, 
Oh, okay. I mean, you are here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And could, could you, would you like to go now? We'd like to have, do the, both the videos first. Now, Ellen just showed hers and um, if you'd be willing to show yours now. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. Show his song, Yeah, we're back on. Did Sorry, you but... guys? Yeah, did you guys manage to finish the see the end of the video, or did the whole thing just cut off? Uh, we uh, saw not the whole uh, video. No, we got a what a minute fifty two seconds. Okay, well, that's that's a, it's like a two minute video. Two yeah, minutes. it's a beautiful, beautiful, um, beautiful work. Thank you. Yes, with it. Yes. I see all the uh, all the neuter all our local neuter banks. So. Yeah, very cool. All from Foley Cove. Right? It's just one one dive side. Yeah. Just all from Foley Cove. All all from Foley Cove. Yep. No, we we'll actually only dive two dive sites. Well, it's my favorite dive site. That's where I go all the time. So, um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, to okay. So this is, sorry about the problem just now, this is the Nudibranch Lollapalooza, the international um, event. So if we, these are all our, our participants. And again, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we're just going to go in, in alphabetical order. Uh, and... You know, there is, uh, as I've said before, for other presentations that we've had, it's a, a wide variety of experience. The number of, you know, there's some people who have just been shooting a year, others have been shooting many years, all kinds of equipment changes, and so uh, uh, varieties of equipment. But it, this is by no means a competition. It, it is just everybody showing uh, one of the creatures that we that we all love. So, uh, Andrea, if you can begin, if you like, okay. and I will. All right, we're starting off with um, on the 
left is the nudibranch and on the right is an ovu, um, ovula ovum, which is a shell underneath, but it's mimicking the nudibranch um, on the left for uh, kind of camouflaging it from prey. So I thought that was kind of neat how they uh, mimic the uh, this um, shell mimics the nudibranch. And here we have a nudibranch on the left. And the same nudibranch is um, in the right picture on the right side, but you can see behind it how it blends in with the um, Xenia coral that it mimics. So um, my guide moved it. I wasn't too happy about him moving it away from its area, but he did place it back. But um, other than that, it just looks like coral on the right. But when you put it on a piece of algae, it really stood out. Um, and you could see the serrata that's identical to the coral. Here's a local favorite, uh, Cathona gymnata. I'm sure the name has changed, but I shot this up at Pierce Island, very tiny nudibranch, but um, they were, we had one year where they were plentiful and it's just a beautiful color, beautiful shape, serrata. And um, recently I saw some nudibranchs that I never knew existed even in books, let alone be able to photograph. And this was one of them. I was calling it a sponge nudie, but it's a Atagema species. Very odd with that Where little- Where was this, Andrew? Um, this was in Dumaguete. Oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't, I was shaking my head. This is a very common nudibranch, but it just, uh, I like the back, black background. Everything was in focus. It's just photogenic. Um, here's another one. Um, I've seen these before, but not like this brilliant color. Um, a phylodesmium areomotense. Uh, breathtaking. Now the local Old Garden Beach. Uh, Eubranchus pallidus. It looks like it was floating through the air, but it was on a piece of kelp, which um, luckily didn't get blasted out with the strobe. <laughs> and here's another one. My guide was looking for this for about four days. Um, it's called, the common name is Starry Night Nudibranch mm. or Doris, Doris, Prismatica stellata, so starry night, and it lives underneath uh, this special certain species of coral. Um, so there it is, it's just crawling along the edge. It was, the coral itself is very flat. Um, we did see several of these and some had eggs. Um, Circe parvona, parvonia, um, Never saw that before, so that was a, a thrill. Yeah, never seen anything like that. No. And here's another one. Um, I didn't know what to make of it, um, but it's a Philodesmium caberanum, and it's got like this corrugated serrata with blue tips. Um, it was on the house reef in Annie Lau. And I looked at my guide and I looked back and it was just Sorry. just something amazing about that. Sorry, but you know- That's if, all right. Um, yeah, if, if sometimes if you want to finish, I can go back if there's something um, that no. I'm no. eating up too much. Okay, it, it, um, uh, Connor? Yeah, hey. Okay, God. We're going for a, a different pace here. Andrea, those are wonderful pictures. Thank you. I'm I'm taking a different style here. I haven't taken a picture of a nudibranch 
since the pandemic started. So everything here is like several cameras ago on like an old Nikon A AW100. Uh, and this is a little cute little guy. I don't know the names of these things, but this is in Fiji. Uh, I went to Bingo Lagoon and this is on the house reef. I just saw that little guy and I hadn't seen one before. So I was excited to take a picture of the first one of these things I saw. Uh, I thought it was interesting as I looked up on the internet, those things are sometimes purplish and sometimes whitish. I didn't quite know what to do with the colors, but it came out pretty nice. I thought this guy was cute. That's a pretty common one. Just crawling around on the kelp. Corley kelp stuff. So that's fun. This is more of an ID shot. Uh, yeah, Andrea, you had a great picture of, of, of these. Uh, but I was really excited to see something that was like blue and yellow and just colorful underwater. And that was the, the first one of these I've seen. And here we are at Old Garden Beach. Uh, I had a real struggle with this picture, trying to pull all the green out of a JPEG. So it's a, it's a little washed out, but I thought it was pretty neat. And that, this was one of the, the first times I actually saw nudibranchs out in, uh, in the wild out here. So I enjoyed that. <laughs> uh, I think there's one more. Yeah. So this is what's keeping me busy right now. <laughs> we got a baby and he's got a little little thing on him so this is the only picture with, on, a, on a cell phone probably probably in this deck but we'll see if anybody else has one he's, he's getting <laughs> fed to sleep right picture. now <laughs> well yeah you, thanks everybody great photos um, by the way and and you know i, I should say if anyone has a question uh, if it's a quick or easy question please uh you know just feel free to, to ask. We don't have to march on with uh, my finger on the uh, advance button. So, when you got the toy, what they get the toy? Yeah. Um, it's uh oh. Let me look it up. Uh, I think you can give it Whole Foods. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that, and uh, we'll I believe it's a. It's a folk manis. So F O L K M A N I S. Yeah. F O L K M A N I S. Uh it's a it's a husband and wife that quit their jobs and now just make uh kind of really nice finger puppets. And they have all kinds of critters. And I saw the nudibranch and I just had to get it for the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <clears throat> all right, Luis. All right. Well, mine are all from, they're pretty much local. This one was taken up in, uh, so the Flavelinas was taken up in Eastport, Maine uh, in April. I mean, in June, we were there. <laughs> I just, you know, one chasing the other. Again, another one that was taken in Eastport. Um, there was a lot uh particles in the water column and i don't put my photos onto photoshop so i don't uh i don't take them out it's more of a the natural look another flabellina as it was heading away but trying to get the the serrata and the uh head Another variety, also in Eastport. Um, this one was just basically hanging at the end of that um, red sargasm weed or, or whatever. It was just floating back and forth. It was interesting trying to get it to come into focus, that's for sure. Yeah, the current never really, never really stops up there. Uh, no, it, that didn't help either. Um, another flubelina. I, I like the, the fact that up there, a lot of the flubelinas that I have seen before down here had more of a reddish color in their serrata. And up there, there were a lot of different variety in terms of the color. And this one's more like brown, as you can see. And this one was chomping away on the, uh, on the tube of the hydroid. Again, this one's from Eastport. Um, a little more reddish in the serratas, but still, um, they were pretty big up there too. 
in comparison to the ones we get here. I mean, they were definitely at least half an inch bigger, minimum, I would say. And this was all done with the macro lens. This one was in Plum Cove, if I recall correctly, the Supreme Deck. I think, Brian, this is the one where we're, we, I was diving with you and Liz, and the current was throwing us around. I managed to get this one somehow. I don't know how. And to come into focus, Brian Weber. Uh, this one was this, a rim back, but this was at, actually at Back Beach. Um, and obviously, it was heading away, so... All that was in focus was the back end. Oh, wow. I don't move my animals <laughs> like they do when you go to the Philippines. Um, this was at, uh, this one was at Plum Cove. This started back this year. This is again at, at Plum Cove. Um, drove a lot during the winter at Plum Cove, and we got a lot of nudibranchs there. And it's it basically the the, uh, the the false dories were everywhere; you couldn't miss them. Again, at, at Foley, I mean at uh, at Plum Cove. I like a, this one at least; you can see its foot. So for, for a moment, I was unsure what type of nudibranch this was because of that. Because I've never seen, in, in the false doors, I've never seen the foot completely away from it. So it was kind of different. Yeah, usually they're completely under the body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was kind of confused. <laughs> That's why I asked you <laughs> what it was. <laughs> well, very good. Very nice. And... Okay, start it and I'll do my best we can. So all my, all the new ranks that I provided are from a recent trip to the Philippines. So this is a sneak peek for next month, I guess. Am I wrong, Andy? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, okay, so I actually did slides that had all the, the, um, the names of these things, but I don't have them written down. So it's a cute nudibranch. Um, I picked this one, uh, most of the nudibranchs you're gonna see because they were very well in focus, which of course is, is great when it happens, uh, but also that they stood up a little, stood out a little bit more from the backgrounds, which wasn't always the case um, when I was photographing in the Philippines. Um, if anyone can identify this nudibranch, like I said, I do have them already identified, but um, that's not on these slides. Once again, uh, nice, very nice colors. I like this a lot. Um, it, one interesting thing, and this is something that Andy's brought up before, is taking photographs in your ranks when you're dealing with a um, a large mirrorless camera like mine, full frame and stuff, is you 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 pick angles and stuff where you're able to get the entire needle rank in focus, uh, since you have a usually have a very narrow depth of field. Um, most of my photographs, you'll see they're on the side, all facing basically the same direction, which is actually done through Lightroom. I just face them all the same way, uh, so it's more fluid. Um, but I really like it when I can both get the uh, the gills and the rhinophores in focus, uh, such as the little guy. Yeah, next one. Um, so this is one of the new ranks that I like saw everywhere. I mean, this these guys are so common that I, I literally was imagining them sitting on our dinner table uh, while we're eating uh, there. Um, what I found interesting about this guy it is much larger uh, gill structure on this guy than I had seen in the other ones. Uh, plus, he was in a very nice uh, orientation. Once again, a little bit different than the other ones. Um, cool colors on this guy, very nice and focus, uh, standing up from the background. Um, I intentionally 
took this guy when I when he was on an angle. Uh, I typically uh, like to have them sloping down, but this this guy had propped his head up, and I thought that made it much more interesting uh, to have a little bit of an angle to the photograph to lead your eye. This is one of the few uh, photographs I took um, when I had, was using a snoot uh, in the Philippines. It was very hard, I found, to use, uh, typically because a lot of times we were in certain sites where there was actually some current uh, to deal with. Uh, but this guy actually stood out from the background quite nicely, uh, which I wasn't expecting. Um, interesting colors. Um, another one almost looks like he's on fire or just has lava in his veins. Um, also, you know, a gill structure of three um, was much different than the other nudibranchs. Once again, really cool nudibranch. Nice, nice uh, colors, yellows, blues, reds. Um, sliding across the surface. Um, some of these guys are interesting because you know you do have to wait for them to get in a good location and sometimes they shrink up, sometimes they elongate like this one. Other ones, they're dangling uh, as I was being shown earlier, uh, which is kind of cool. I did see that. This seemed to be one of the larger ones I had seen. Um, once again, I wish I had the names in front of me. Yeah, it's a chromodori, right? Yeah. I just barely remember the names. Like I said, I wasn't prepared. I thought they... No, you know, it's, okay. it's not about names. and stuff. It's just it's images. Mm -hmm. So there's another one. It was uh, Noodle Brink uh, out and about eating, um, very much in the open. Uh, one of the few ones that I actually could uh, have a photograph with the background uh, there, uh, of course, you know, I have a full frame, so it's a nice uh, book, book in the back. Um, yeah, it's one of my, one of the new breaks I like. This one I thought a little bit interesting. I wasn't too sure if I was going to put this one in because some of these new breaks, um, they suck their gills in, uh, which I, I actually didn't know they, they could do. So he is, or maybe you guys can tell me if he just got him bit off, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, nice perspective, you know, right against the sand. Uh, you can tell by the sand granules, just how small this little guy is. Uh, but managed to get him. I don't know if Tom is here today. Not, I don't think. Yeah, I think he said he wasn't going to be able to make the meeting. So, um, I think Tom shot most of these with a snoot. Yeah, that looks like snoot. Yeah, and this is from uh, Pierce Island, I think. See how we all look at nudibranchs quite differently. These are amazing. He's quite good. One of our locals. Rim back, neuter break. Ellen. So this is one um, that I, it was, it was shortly after I had learned, thanks to Photo Society, how in the world you turn the background black, which I had not had a clue about. And this little guy was, um, it was also on a safety stop. So I had plenty of time to figure out how to frame him and how to get the background black. And so this was like, you know, uh, photo society 
results. I was very happy with that. Um, this is actually in St. Vincent, again, a, a very early photo of mine. If I'd known about black, I'd have probably done something about that, but I didn't at the time. <laughs> that was when I learned about it. Timor came out with a photo and I said, what? How did you do that in the daytime? Um, yeah, fun uh, nudie, obviously a large one. And he's got this little um, emperor shrimp, is it? Or cucumber shrimp or what is it? What kind of, it's some kind emperor of- Emperor shrimp, I think. An emperor shrimp, which it's you usually find on the, when you turn over a sea cucumber, you find these guys. But he was riding on a nudie, which I thought was like, Okay, then. Okay, so um, luckily nobody's nobody's gotten into the sex so far. As you probably know, nudies are hermaphroditic, so they are both male and female. And on the left side of their bodies, which with these guys, it's a little hard to figure out what left and right is. But anyway, they have this, I'm sure it's got a name, they connect these um, ports, I'll call them, and you'll correct me in a moment, and they exchange eggs and sperm between the two nudies. Yeah. Generally, each one is sending and receiving. Yeah. 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 And, and there's probably a name for that port, right? But I, I don't know it. What? Sorry. I could make up a name. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Um, anyway. <laughs> So always, always fun to see that. Here's another one. Uh, we've seen these um, nudies in other people's photos, but these guys are um, making it happen. And I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, three. Menage uh, à trois. I don't know how you, I don't know how you deal with the ports there, but. Um, and in another photo I have of these guys, about two feet away is an egg case. So somehow they figured out how to do that. Uh, Spanish dancer eggs are always just amazing. Um, huge, huge, well, you know, for nudies, huge uh, mass of eggs. That's a pretty big nudibranch in terms of uh, nudibranchs. It's pretty large. It's be five, six inches, I think. And so. I think this egg mass was probably five or six inches. Um, this is a fun one. The common name is the solar powered nudibranch because it, and Andy will correct me if I get this wrong, it's got algae inside its body and the algae um uses the sun to do its thing and the result of that is what this nudie eats is it's that... like walking around with a little greenhouse on its uh, all over its body yeah and they're cool. and they're pretty they're pretty big they're a good four or five inches i think so solar solar powered nudie and i i uh yeah, if I if I'd gotten a different angle, you could maybe see the rhinophores, but there there are rhinophores, but otherwise it's this just bizarre looking mass of stuff. Um, just kind of fun to see the the um, rhinophores and the giant rest of his his body there. Different, a little bit different angle than you might normally do it, but great color and composition of, of the animal. And, the, the and I have no idea what that gills. is on the right. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. But it, it, those are gills and they're gigantic. Yeah, the, the gills being so much bigger, yeah, than the, the body. Usually that's, well, and then Daryl had that one with them drawn in. The, these gills, these gills are um, quite flamboyant. And this was an odd one. That was a, a night dive. Um, 
again, not something that I would have identified as a nudie, except the dive master said it was, and it was actually quite large, maybe five inches and almost um, circular. I might have the name, but I'm not into names. Pluco, Pluto, or Pluco, Bronc. Um, it's re closely okay. related to, uh, to, it's like one of the branches of, of nudibranchs. But yeah, I've seen them almost the size of a dinner plate. Yeah, they're huge. So on behalf of Mary, um, I'm to tell you that she can't figure out how to get her audio working. So she's not going to be able to say anything about these, but it was the trip that you and Finn were yeah. on. Um, it's a new camera for her. And um, look at that. Yeah. Chromodora in Mexicali, I think. Is that... Um... Nice. Very nice. But, you know, the camera was new to her, and she got a lot of great shots on that trip. I'm not sure which Chromodora this is. Anna's Chromodora, I think. Very cool. Just the, the especially in the tropics, the variety of of, of nudibranchs is it seems like it's endless. It's actually a sea hare. It's um, algae eating. Uh, cousin of the nudibranchs, the sea slug. Sometimes they use the term interchangeably sea slug and nudibranch, but sea slugs really are the ones that are uh, mostly feed on on, on algae. And these are pretty, this, this one, I, I, I was diving with Mary at the time, so I know this was probably four or five inches. It was pretty big. She seems to specialize in these ones doing serious yoga poses. Really? Uh, and, and the front part of the nudibranch, as it progresses and moves along, it raises that up like an upside down umbrella and then back down and up and down. So this is the upward moment. And nudibranchs is just the the design of the animal. So here we're, we're seeing part of the animal, but the design and the colors are, are just uh, uh, it's what makes nudibranchs so fun to uh, to shoot. Sure, had you narrate mine. All right, Wayne. Hi. Um, so all of the nudibranchs in this little package of 10 were taken in Canada. So I thought I'd only bring Canadian nudibranchs. Most of them are East Coast, but I've snuck in a few West Coast nudibranchs and hopefully I don't have too much of the same pictures as Timor. We did the trip together. Um, I, it, I mean, these are all products of my therapy sessions uh, and obviously my photo subject of choice. Our nudibranchs here are mostly winter time. They're starting to peter off now, much probably like you guys as well. Although I did find one on a rec dive yesterday, uh, tiny little uh, red gill. I'm not very good with the names. I think the common name for this is hairy spiny dory. Um, we have about 30 varieties here. I love finding them out on the limb, on a limb like this, so you can get in a position where they stand out from the background. And this is not a common nudibranch here in our area. Um, Timor may know the name of this, uh, Pallidus or Brancus pallidus, I don't, I'm not completely sure. And I don't want to embarrass myself. I'm about finding them, not naming them. So next slide. Not to worry. Um, I've only ever seen this up here once. Uh, oh, Kenya. Um, Acidicola. Acidicola, yeah. Um, and I was lucky to get this shot 
about a second after this, one of the divers in our group, her fin came down right on top of him and washed him away. And I've never seen one since. Um, this is a very, to me, it's just such a unique nudibranch. And uh, so far, quite rare around here. I don't know if you guys see these very often where you are, but this is an East Coast find at a dive site just down the road. We've got about 30 dive sites within an hour of the house here. Um, and this is one of the popular sites, Patty's Head. The right time of year, you can see lots of nudibranchs. So. Again, another one, lots going on in this one, uh, red gill. Um, I like seeing the facial expressions, the stuff underneath. So not, not a normal composition and a, a treat for me to find them um, from other angles, sort of the underside. With all the eggs too. Yeah, yeah, a lot going on here. And there's a skeleton shrimp in the neighborhood, a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. So were, were those the eggs of that nudie? I, I think so, yes. Yeah, I think I caught it in the act. Wow. Now, this, uh, this is a West Coast. Um, I think it's a Janulos uh, Fuscus. Fuscus. Um, we saw some fabulous nudibranchs on our trip out West. So much so, I'm making an annual event, going back again in, uh, in the first week of October this year. And out there, the nudibranchs are like, freakishly large and stuff that we hadn't seen before. So it, it, I love going out and exploring. This is one of the ones we saw on some of the early dives. Um, one of the things I learned around here is to keep looking up. <laughs> they do cast themselves. This was floating around in the water column. My wife jokes that I miss the sharks and the groupers, but I find little tiny nudibranchs and things like that. But um, yeah, I love seeing them. and. Spent some time with this, a lot of shots, obviously, in the water column, trying to get the right position, but this guy is uh, searching for other grounds. Another West Coast, uh, Hermesenda crassicornis. Um, so much, I like this one so much, I put it on my watch. <laughs> um, a bit of a narrower depth of field. Um, I think on this one, I had a, a flash uh, malfunction. So I switched to uh, video light and changed the settings around. And obviously without all the f-stop, it, it shortened my depth of field, but I, I, I really like the shot. Uh, the right things are in focus in this one. So I got lucky. Um, this one, um, I think this might've been from our last trip to Deer Island, Andrew. Um, this, um, this one I like because Everybody asks what a nudibranch eat, so you, you actually catch them in the act here with the hydroids. So up close and personal, a little bit of action going on. I like the I like the shot. Another West Coast. This is an orange peel nudie. I'm gonna bat, butcher this name again. Tuchvina gigantia. Um, these ones were honestly eight or ten inches long. <laughs> Um, and my reference, uh, my West Coast reference book says they can grow up to be 20 inches long. These mm. are massive uh, nudibranchs. We saw quite a few of them um, while we were there. Very large. And just another casted, uh, I think this is Eubrancus aegyptus. Help me if I'm wrong. Timor will fix me, I'm sure. So just a sample of what we have, again, on the East Coast uh, and a little bit of West Coast flavor. I think that's the last slide. So at some time, uh, we'll have you, we'd love to have you come and do a, uh, a presentation on, on Nova Scotia. Well, one of my, and Timor, uh, Yuya Timor and um, Lana uh, Smithson, uh, you may know Lana, you know Lana for sure. Mm -hmm. um, they came to Halifax last year, got to know them, which brought me into this group and, and had a, the opportunity to meet you, Andrew, at Deer Island. It was great. Um, I always had this idea that once you get to know some people, particularly with photographers, because we dive the same way, is, um, you know, you come dive my backyard and I'll come dive your backyard. I did have a chance to go down to Boston, although the weather didn't agree with us very much. Timor's hospitality, they opened our doors to Lynn and I. 
Uh, I certainly want to return that favor, uh, get people up here and diving. Um, the good. trick is it's very seasonal here. You could, uh, the last little while we haven't been seeing very much at all. Um, and then suddenly it'll blow up again. Uh, winter diving here is the best for nudibranchs if that's what you're looking for. But our water goes down to, you know, 33 degrees, 34 degrees, but we're still diving in that. I've got about 85 dives so far this year. I'm hoping to hit 150. Probably sounds a little nicer. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to get there. So I'll leave All it to right. Timor. Timor. I'm here. Okay. So this is uh, um, just a little story, uh, how I pick those. We talked with Andrea and she asked, how did you pick your favorite? And I said, you know what? I have one specific nudie prank that I shot in a Catalina Island in California and I was searching for it. And while I was searching for it, I just opened I don't know, 2016 and I started going sifting through the pictures. And I just stop on those particular nudie brand that I'm going to show. And they're all my favorites. So it's <laughs> hard, uh, too hard to choose. It, it all depends on what time frame you um, you wear in the, underwater. And you can definitely find your favorite nudibranchs. This is called the Velosa. This is, was shot in uh, my favorite place diving, which is my country. My favorite country is Canada to dive. And Wayne, thank you very much for taking us to Vancouver Island. But I actually love to dive on the uh, East Coast. So this is the second A. Um, that's a, if you guys never dove there, it's a treasure. You, you must exactly, yeah. Thank you. So this is um, Eastport also, uh, one of my favorite places to go in diving. Uh, next, Indy, please. Yeah, this is uh, Ireland. Yeah, I love this picture. I was just going through those pictures and I it's I stopped on this. It's my my vision. So, okay, I won I won that. Those look like all eggs underneath there too. Yes. Uh in Ireland, uh, I had a picture where on the one blade of a kelp, I start counting them, them I just drop it because I count over 50 nudibranchs on the one small area of the blade and I said uh, I just wow. take one big shot. This is also Ireland, and this new brand that uh, draw my attention. And it's hard to judge when while you're on the water that it's going to be your favorite new brand. But when you get the right exp exp um, fixing on the computer, it does. So that's what, what I picked. Um, this is also Ireland. Uh, sorry, that's a Scotland. It's a Matt and I. We went there. And I love this new brand. It's, it's nice transparency, translucency. Uh, this is um, um, uh, uh, Norway. That's in Norway when I went to uh, Gulen. Uh, Gulen. That that's that's what that's an amazing place above the water, underwater. Uh, no, that wasn't the safari. It was just the, one of my first dives. Mm -hmm. And this, Andrea, you recognize it? Uh, I wanted to make a surprise for you. This is a uh, Chloratica, and it's a, a Rhode Island Gaino Park in the depths of uh, 18 feet. Uh, Matt, um, and I forgot the name of the guy. So we dove there. And all of a sudden, we see that among the uh, mud and nothing else. So, oh, very cool. All thank right. you. Um, Michael, is Michael here? Okay. Um, well, we'll. Uh, well, it's obviously, I don't know where he uh, has shot these, but that's obviously it, someplace in Indo-Pacific. Um, I mean, he has said that he likes to use the snoot. So I, this is one weird nudibranch. Wow. Wow. 
And then some of the nudibranch that um, has evolved to look just like soft coral. So it, we saw some earlier. I think Andrea had one. Um, someone else did also. They, they just look like soft coral. They look like polyps. And this is the head section of one. The rest of the nudibranch looks like this. It's like uh, transparent, yet you can see supporting structures in this. It's almost as if all the flesh flesh were taking off of a uh, of a mammal and you just see the bones. Well, that's sort of what this kind of a nudibranch is. I, I don't know the name, but it's definitely one weird nudibranch. It's always another snoot shot. A Willems chromodorus. These are usually very long uh, nudibranchs. They can be eight, nine inches long. So to get them all in the macro shot is tough. So he chose just the head areas. It's very pretty. Mm. that snoot photography really does isolate the animal so here you, know, you get to see otherwise the gills that you see in the back they'd be lost with the the background but uh, this really stand out here quite well Again, another nudibranch where the, the background is uh, completely blackened off with a snoot. This is some sort of a flabellina, I think. Oh, same idea as what, Ellen, what you had. Uh, two shrimp. Yeah, but he's got two. Yeah, show off, you know. And this is the lead off one that you had, uh, Daryl, where it's, I think, Bullock's uh, Promodorid. But boy, you get to see the underside of, of this impressive shot. Beautiful animal. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So now we're going to expand the length of time that we can look. Instead of 10 seconds, we should probably go like you know, 30 seconds or so. Um, this is from the Sia Cortez, another flavolina. It's feeding on on hydroids. It's a Spanish shawl, it's called. Andy, I'm sorry if I may interrupt you. That was the nudibranch that I had in my mind as my favorite, and I never reached it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's why I put it in. <laughs> and so, as Daryl said, you know, we if you're shooting a, a a, a DSLR, you don't have much depth of field. So you pick the spot, unless you're shooting to the side, you know, pick one area that you'd like to have in focus. And here's a pair of line numbers. So they're both feeding on, on uh, tunicates, not mating. There's another possibly flavolina, but I'm not sure. That's where a snoot would really uh, would work well. And it is one of those uh, nudibranchs that looks like uh, soft coral. And you can see the, the rhinophores here in the front. Now, this one, I don't even know the name of the nudibranch. And Timor, you made some reference to when you see them uh, later, you don't know that they're going to be a, a nudibranch that you like. I never even saw this nudibranch. I was shooting the shrimp, and yet on the bottom, now you all know how small these shrimp are. Look at the size of this. It's very, very tiny. So I put a smile on my face when I saw it, when I first edited it. So it's- Andy, looks like a Sean the Sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But def definitely tiny.
and another Willems uh, Cromodorid. These Cromodorids, these are the last couple from the uh, the Philippines, and there's really a lot of uh, a lot of nudibranchs there. And this uh, Chamberlain's Nembrotha, and it's they Nembrotha's all feed on tunicate. So this one's feeding on tunicate, and a shrimp is walking down the rhinophores. Rhinophore. This is another Nembrotha, again feeding on tunicates. Now, Liz. Liz, you with us? I am. All right, Liz. All right. First of all, I hope you can hear me okay. Second yep. of all, I hope you like a lot of brown because almost all of these are local nudibranchs, either from uh, Cape Ann or a couple up in Eastport, like this guy right here. Um, I almost lost my group shooting this. I think Tamor and Luis uh, were pointing it out, and I snuck up behind them, and I'm like, what are they looking at? I couldn't even tell what it was. It was so tiny. But this is the best shot that I managed to get of that. Uh, this one was in Eastport as well. And I was very excited because I had never seen such a glorious shag carpet nudibranch before. Uh, and there it was. I think Tamor and uh, Lana pointed this one out. There was another one somewhere in the background too, I'm not sure. Uh, this guy was so cool. This was at Plum Cove uh, over this past winter, Nudibranch again, and it was kind of a purple color, which I didn't expect. Usually these dudes are like orange or white, but this one looked very, very purpley. And I love purple, so I was happy to see it. We've got a little rim back buddy going on, hanging out on the seaweed. And our little Dorid buddy, uh, I don't know, reminds me of a little bunny hopping away from me. I just love the rhinophores. Uh, e old ordinary flavolina. But I liked the movement that was going on with this one, where it's kind of uh, coming in from the light side of the photo into the, the darker foreground. That made me happy. Uh, <laughs> so this is not a great photo of this nudibranch, but I liked that it was hanging out on, uh, on that little sea vase tunica. I was actually photographing, uh, a sea raven and my buddy comes up and like pulling my fin, gesturing. I'm like, what? And then he points at this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty cool. All right. Another Flabellina buddy. Uh, I liked how this one was coming in on the diagonal. This photo is heavily edited to take out almost every trace of backscatter. And I'm not sure if I like that or not. I'm still deciding. Uh, another little orange nudibranch from up in Eastport. This one, it would have been impossible to get all that backscatter out, but I sort of... I like how it works with the composition. So I'm not too mad. Well, when you're up in Eastport, the backscatter comes along with everything. <laughs> exactly. Um, same place-ish, Eastport again. I liked how this guy looks like he's kind of, I don't know, he's got a picture. just stepping out from, from behind that fold in the kelp. It made me very happy. Beautiful picture. Very nice. And uh, Jurgen? Yeah. So all of the pictures submitted, I uh, think, are either from Lembe or from Anilau. So, uh, and there we saw nudibranchs Nuri almost on every dive. Um, this one is snooted. Uh, I think it's some. It's pretty common, I believe, a, a frabellina. I like the the fact that it kind of came over the top of the uh, coral. 
And there was a lot of current, so the uh, serrata were blowing in the in the current. Um, so Pikachu, would have been? I yeah, I don't know which one. Maybe the Picta. Uh, tiny, tiny, tiny one. Um, this one. I believe this one is Anilao. Uh, I like the color of this one. And again, I wish I had, had a little more depth of field because that uh, uh, it had a lot of tiny spots on it that I wish would be a little bit sharper. Amazing body on it. Yeah. They're so bright, uh, uh, very colorful, yeah. Uh, this one, I uh, this was on the sand. This probably must be in uh, in Lembe. Um, and when you just look at it, it it looks like almost like um, a seaweed, but you can see the uh, rhinophores in this one, and it's uh, it's quite big. I think it's uh, at least two inches across and it's very flat on the on the ground. Did you did you step on it by accident? No. <laughs> It does look like it, yeah. yeah. I like the color, the purple color of this one. Uh, this was in Anilao, and it's the only the only time I've I've seen uh this one, and I was surprised. I've seen pictures of it one of this one before. Uh, I wasn't expecting this to be so big. It's bigger than a tennis ball. Uh, and it was it was quite deep. Um, when we got there, it was kind of just crawling on, on top of that little uh, coral head, so it was easy to get a uh, get a nice picture separated from the background. Mm -hmm. And the color of this one, I don't know if it's if that uh, if if um, the bryozoan that's in front of it is, is it's food or not. But I like the color of this one. Uh, yeah, this is a Sean the sheep. This is uh, the one that Andy showed earlier next to the skeleton shrimp. Uh, this is a bigger version, uh, but it's it's still tiny, tiny, tiny. How big uh, would that be? So that's probably uh, a pinhead size. It's I I used the strongest macro lens I had, uh, and I cropped this one a lot. So this is um, cool shot. Very yeah. cool. Um, another orange. I like the orange ones. This is another orange one. Uh, and yeah, this uh, can kind of see the rhinophores and the front right side I was very lucky to have that sitting on top of the I don't know that is a rock um yeah, with an animal thing. like this the, the rhinophore is what gives you a little you begin to figure out what's what direction this thing is going mm -hmm. pretty amazing and Celeste is she here tonight she uh told me that she had, uh, I think this is in her photograph is from Hawaii, and she got one shot. Um, I think it was taken with her phone, and then the camera, the housing flooded, so she had one shot. So she's, this is the, uh, the one photo. So, but she didn't want to participate. So, it was this, but tough after the flooding of housing. And Tomas, yeah, so you hear it. Okay, okay, so this one's quite special because this was the very first nudibranch I ever could take a decent picture of after discovering my uh, macro settings in the TG6. And it, it is a nice little optical illusion, it looks like it has a big eyeball that I really liked. But obviously, it's uh, not a real eye, but it looks cool, I think. 
and this one was taken at a noble light. And first I thought uh, it must have been very old or sick or something because of the crusty skin, but then I discovered that these species looks like this, so it's normal. <laughs> And starting with this picture, all of the rest are from a, a single day. Uh, in uh, June 1st, they were diving a uh, pebble beach. And all of these pictures are from that day's two dives. It was Nudibranch Heaven there. I was surprised that there were so many, like 13 different individuals across several different species. This is a pebble beach? Yeah, Pebble Beach, uh, June 1st this year. And all the rest are from there. Uh, yeah, I like this one because it also looks like it has an eye and looking down. <laughs> but obviously not. Uh, it's a nice little fluffy one, like a little bunny. Uh, oh, I love the colors of this one is purple. It looks great. This is a pretty nudibranch. Yeah, it was super pretty. Yeah, first I, I didn't know what this was, but then I got closer and I uh, realized that it has those rhinophores. So I thought, oh, another nudibranch. I never saw this one before. It was also very, very tiny was sitting on a cow. And this one's interesting because uh, it looks like it only has one rhinophore and one oral tentacle. And uh, it's quite long too. And I took another picture of this from the front. So the next picture is the same individual. And uh, you can see the head that also it shows the one a uh, rhinophore and one oral tentacle, so maybe someone bit it off. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was Unusual. interesting. And this is the last one. Uh, I thought it was great because this was this is my first first picture of two of the branks in one picture. They were cuddling nicely, so that that was an awesome time. Well, I was surprised. I was so happy. <laughs> nice when you get to see a lot of nudibranchs and a lot of marine life. On, and maybe... Yeah, there were so many. Oh, my God. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. On and Brian. Yep, I'm here. All right. All right. So I got the uh, Nimbrotha cuberiana in, uh, in Dumaguete. It, I, I found another one that was doing that same thing that Ellen was seeing where it was like hanging off and like just sort of wagging around. That was weird. <laughs> I was like, come on, just I, I want to take a picture. No, never happened. I just ended up giving up on that one. But this one, this one was better positioned. <laughs> uh, this was, uh, Asla found this one, uh, uh, Sargassum, Sargassum nudie. We found these at uh, Fort Wetherill uh, a couple years ago. Really, really cool to uh to see them they're they're weird looking oh how big is that uh maybe like two inches really wow this is the thecacera picta the uh pikachu pikachu nudie also from dumaguete we found like there was one particular site where the dive guides were like we're going to find them. They're going to be here. And that was, I think that was the only place we saw them. And we saw like, I saw, I think four or five of them and that was the only place. <laughs> so it was a good spot. They are a nice looking nudibranch. Yeah. This one, I'm cheating a little bit. They're not nudibranchs. These are uh, the lettuce leaf sea slugs. Uh, but this was in uh, Saba and the guide like there was another guy in the water. He was just kind of goofing around on his own. And he came to the group and like grabbed me and like pulled me over. He's like, you got to take a picture of this. Um, so this is a pair of them nude, uh, mating and they're just like totally different colors. I had never seen this like electric blue um, other than in Seba. And they were, they were really cool.
Uh, this was from the Sea of Cortez. Uh, I don't remember the species, but they're really they're really cool. They're like a pretty they're pretty good size too. Um, this was back in 2018. This is my first trip with the TG5. Um, so I was I was just excited to get out there and take a bunch of pictures with it. So and there was there was some good some good nudies. There's there's a couple more from uh, Sea of Cortez there. Um, this one actually preys on that last one. Um, so but I really like the colors on this one. I like the 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 stripy patterns and like the bright the bright orange and the bright blue. Like just really really cool to see. This is another one, uh, Sea of Cortez, um, just crazy speckles, polka dots. Um, I think this one was a pretty good size too. Um, that was like six years ago. So I was, I was going back into the archives a little bit. Uh, this is uh, Dendrodorus nigra. Um, this was in Dumaguete. And I really like just like the starry, the starry pattern on there. Um, really cool. Pretty good size, a couple inches, a couple inches long too and moving fairly quickly um i know we andrea and i talked about that that they uh they, they run but <laughs> uh they, they're like when you get to the 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 nice the nicer places you got to keep up with them it's a little tricky <laughs> um this is a local um tenelia veritas i believe um not one that i've seen very often but um i really like the, the green serrata with the little yellow tips on them really nice Uh, this is a another uh, Shaun the Sheep variant with with the blue and the blue and the yellow, also very tiny. They're on those same little like they look like little ginkgo leaves. Um, and yeah, it was just it was a project every single time. Just like lay down in the sand and try and like get everything set up just right to like hold the leaf down and get the um, get the diopter, you know, the camera with the diopter in real close and. Um, a lot of time spent trying to trying to get these guys, but I really like the the blue and the yellow one. I think they're really cool. Yeah, the nice nudibranch. If they could be a little bigger, that'd make everybody's life a lot easier. Yeah, I would appreciate that. <laughs> and Bill, I'm not sure if Bill is. Bill, are you here? You're not here. Okay, well, I'll be Bill. There's another one of those uh, nudibranchs that looks like uh, soft coral. You see the rhinophores right here. So it's actually going towards the soft coral. You can see how sim how similar it looks. There's another, I guess, some kind of chromodorid. Not only is the head here, you can see the rhinophores in this part. And this also, this is one of those really weird nudibranchs. I believe the rhinophore is here, and I believe here, uh, but the the appendages are, are just uh, uh, more than half the length of the body. Another kind of chromador. Chromadorids are real uh, prevalent in the in the Philippines, well, Indo Pacific. I've ne never seen one of these. Wish I had. A gigantic uh, gills on this. Another reticulated chromadorid. It's a beautiful nudibranch. Nice photo, too. Hmm. This is one great example of what I mentioned earlier in the very beginning about how sometimes just the design of these animals, because they are uh, so weird, that it the head section is not visible, nor the tail, but it's sort of making a turn. But you have here a, a really a very pleasing design. The, the the gills are up on top, 
and then there's just a sort of either a side view or it's curled up, but uh, kind of a cool shot. And I believe this is like the one of the similar to one of the animals that Ellen that you had showed that video of that Melibi, um, where that or the hooded nudibranch, where I believe this is the hood section here, where it just stretches out and goes forward and uh, feeds that way. Yeah, it's a close-up of the same. And Virginia, I don't know, Virginia, are you here? I know that Michael is not, so, I, okay. So, um, a while back, when we were talking about uh, photographing things, and, and she meant that she uses... Um, a very, uh, she shoots with, with a, um, a DSLR, and instead of always being on F16 or F22, she has the lens wide open, so you have an even more narrow uh, depth of field. Um, so it's um, some very pretty uh, things, not in this particular case. This is Great example of these two line nembrotha mating. If you're ever wondering whether their nudibranchs are mating or not, their mating devices uh, are on the right-hand side. So if their two right-hand sides are facing and touching, uh, it's a safe bet that they're mating. But this one is, you don't even have to bet. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. Nice shot. Takes a little while to get your head wrapped around this because it's such a weird uh, nudibranch. Not even sure. And then this is, I would imagine, the head section here looks like the rhinophore, but it's, it's another mating seen. pair. Uh, looks like two. Yeah, it's a yeah, pair. yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. So, yeah, here is the point of contact. That's why. So here's the the rhinophores of the this nudibranch, and then these two are the ones from the one on the bottom. Wow, very. I've never seen a nudibranch like this. So these are the eggs of this nudibranch. This nudibranch is often seen on the sand. Uh, this. Uh, type this genus of, of nudibranchs that really you see it cruising along so there's one the uh, one rhinophore kind of retracted and here's another one here wow nice shot the very common uh animal this uh this evening very nice This one is perched up. Again, I think she was using a snoot here also. Her husband, Michael, uses a snoot all the time. I don't know if she does, but on this particular one, it looks like it's done with a snoot. There's one coming down, soft coral. And look, oh, hydroid. Um, again, I mean, I've seen so many nudibranchs here tonight that I've never seen before. This adds to the list. I've never seen this. This one's translucent. Oh. I wish you were here to give us a little commentary on some of these. Now, this is one where uh, I'm assuming that uh, that she had the lens wide open. So you get very little. This is obviously very sharp. Uh, and then even from here, 
this is a very short distance, but that's already beginning to be out of focus. So she's just drawing the attention right here and then just letting the rest be designed. Nice effect. I mean, there's so many ways to shoot these animals and uh, And a few people tonight had uh, images just similar to this, where you're basically right on the sand, the camera's on the sand or on the bottom, looking straight at the uh, the head of the animal. So here are the, the two rhinophores, and it's just coming straight at you. It's a good, interesting look. But because the, the an these animals, these nudibranchs are so... Um, varied so beautiful so colorful that you just look at them as design so you know you're not even seeing the whole animal you're not even seeing a third of this animal but it's just you're just playing with the design and colors and it's pretty cool mm -hmm. This animal has been, a few people have sh had this animal, uh, this nudibranch tonight, uh, and everyone's pictures are, are, are quite different. Thank you. Thank you all. This was, uh, was terrific. Um, I, I didn't know... Um, I would like your feedback. You don't have to do it now, but so we can get word to us. Because uh, we'll do other things like this um, uh, where we just focus our attention on either one geographical area or one creature. Um, and uh, although I said I was the uh, dictator for a day, it's not a comfortable spot to be dictator for a day. You know, I was counting off seconds. First, I was looking at a watch. Then I'm trying to count off or waiting for people to uh, pause in the in their presentation of this. Uh, so uh, if there's ways that uh, we could improve this, uh, I'd definitely be open to, uh, to that. But I do want to thank you all for taking the time to go through all your files and uh, and send in these uh, these photos. Can uh, I ask one question? Sorry to interrupt. Before sure, everyone... sure. So this is a question for everybody. So given the macro subject and given, you know, some of these look like you're just got your belly on the sand, um, what viewfinders is everyone using for these? Um, I can't think right now. <laughs> but whatever you think is appropriate. So what, what, do you, what do you mean that you find it there? Like, are you using a 45 degree angle? Are you using just the oh. back of the LED screen? I a 45 magnified on mine. A 45 degree? Yeah. I'm using a straight magnified. A magnified. Mine, but a straight one, yeah. I, I use a straight one also. And you, and don't. you have an angled one, right? And I don't know. No, you don't. It comes out off, off the back, but I, I don't know. I, I know Daryl does. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you that are not familiar with this, is the uh, a forty five degree angle of a your you could have your camera set on the sand and you could be above the camera pretty much and looking down at it and see uh, straight out of what you're shooting, um, and it's almost like a periscope in a sense. So you can see, so you're not seeing straight on, but you're seeing uh, uh, seeing it from a much more comfortable way to shoot. So if you don't have one of those 45s and you, uh, and you have the camera on the sand, you're gonna have to put your head in the sand too. You know, you've gotta get down low, uh, as low as you can. Uh, to, to try and get the shot. Sometimes I, when, I, when I do it, I'm really looking at it. I got one eye hanging, just sort of trying to see if I can get it. And it's it's not as easy. 45 is definitely the uh, uh, a nice way to go. But it, it, let me ask here, it, it, is there anyone else that besides Daryl that's using a, a 45? 
degree angle? No? Everybody's shooting straight? I'm also using a 45, yeah. You are you too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think my LED tilts to a 45 degree angle inside of the housing. Um, it definitely tilts. I'm not sure if the angle is 45, but mm -hmm. yeah. But, but you don't have to be uh, shoot straight across, right? You don't have to look right straight at it. You can look at slightly above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. precisely. Makes it a lot easier. Yeah. A lot easier on the neck. <laughs> Andy? Yeah. I, I shoot with a 45 degree and I've got a 180 as well, magnified. And I, once you've shot to the 45, you won't go back to the straight one. Really? Absolutely fantastic. But it take a while to get used to. That's because what I've heard. You, you look and, there's, and you aim it and there's nothing there <laughs> to move around. It's, but uh, you, you get it eventually. And I mean, I'll just leave it on all the time now for everything, even wide angle. Really? Yeah. So wide angle and you're shooting something that's moving in midwater, uh, you're still okay? That's yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But they 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 they're quite pricey. I think they're close to about eighteen hundred dollars now. For the naughty cam. Yeah. And of course the nice thing it has a diopter that you can focus for your uh, glasses or your um, prescription. So you can actually make it razor sharp. Well, that's what, you know, the odd description of it is what I've heard from, from pretty much everyone that has, that the learning curve was there and to, to, not to get comfortable shooting like that, but they all love it. Yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Jürgen, would you say the same thing? Would you? So when I got my system, I, I got it used and it came with a straight and a 45. And I've actually, I've started using the 45 right from the beginning. So I uh, I think I got used to it a little bit quicker than maybe other people would have. And he's going to get me the 45 as a Christmas present. But okay. yours is an LCD. Or the magnifier. I'm so tired of putting my, with the tripod on the sand and I'm always tilting down and I'm never at the eye level of the crab so yeah. i'm uh, sit on my chin i my chin on the sand i'm feel so i feel so disgusted so i'm <laughs> i'm gonna get a 45 i'm gonna make him buy me the 45 well maybe maybe santa will be good yeah. <laughs> well again uh, thank you very much for everyone thanks for yeah. tuning in and beautiful uh, images the presenters uh thank you very very much and and I'll be publishing a Nudibranch book uh, real soon from Nudibranchs from all over the world. And if anybody would like to buy one. Uh, uh... Now, uh, all your pictures, I will delete them all tonight. So, uh, but I do thank you very, very much. If you would like to see this again, as you know, these are all recorded and give a few days, a week or so, and you'll be able to see this, uh, this, the, uh, meeting tonight on uh, on YouTube. So, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.